God for all that he has done for us. I give God praise, honor, and glory. And we want to thank you for joining us on tonight for Bible study. Please share this video with your family and friends. Our scripture tonight will come from uh, Psalm uh, 115, verses 1 through 18, but I will tell you which ones I will read, not all of them. Verse 1 says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Not to us, not to us, but to your name goes all the glory for your unfailing love and faithfulness. Verses 9 to 13 reads, O Israel, trust the Lord. He is your heifer and your shield. O priest, descendants of Aaron, trust the Lord. He is your heifer and your shield. All who fear the Lord, trust the Lord. He is your heifer and your shield. The Lord remembers us and will bless us. He will bless the people of Israel and bless the priests the descendants of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both great and lowly. Verses 17 and 18 reads, The dead cannot sing praises to the Lord, for they have gone into the silence of the grave. But we can praise the Lord both now and forever. Praise the Lord. We can praise God now. The psalmist says it's God's name, not the people's name, that should be glorified. Too often, we ask God to glorify his name with our name. For example, we might pray for help to do a good job so that our work will be noticed. Or we may ask that a presentation go well so we will be appreciated. Nothing wrong with wanting others to be pleased and impacted by our work. The problem comes when we want to look good without the regard to how we want God to look in the process. So before we pray, ask yourself who will get the credit if God answers your prayer? Now I know that you all have noticed that I have been learning to play the saxophone. And someone asked me the other day, what was my purpose for learning to play the saxophone? Number one, I always learned to, wanted to know how to play saxophone. And another reason, I need to keep my brain active since I retired. And then the other reason is I want to play songs that will glorify God because he is so worthy to be praised. So the song that we're doing today is I just want to praise you for all that you have done because God is keeping us. He's the one that's allowing us to wake up every morning and have our right mind and be able to just go and do things. So I just thank God for the ability. Oh, 
thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We praise you. We honor you. All glory belongs to you, Father God. We honor you today. We magnify you. We lift you. We thank you. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. We ask you to bless us, Father God, as we come before you one more again to honor you and praise you by the study of your word. We ask you to bless your word tonight, that your word will fall on good soil, that men, women, boys, and girls will be changed by your word. And we ask you to keep the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God again for an opportunity to stand before you to speak for him and for you to receive his word. Our focus tonight is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We will endeavor to go through verses 6 through 12 on tonight. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 6 through 12 is where we are tonight. The Apostle Paul is talking and he is speaking to us. The first chapter says that the Apostle Paul, uh, Silas, and Timothy are speaking to us with Paul being the principal writer here. So the Apostle Paul says to us, we're in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 6 through 12 tonight. The Apostle Paul talks about the rapture taking place. He comes out of uh, chapter 4 of 1 Thessalonians. And he leads us into 2 Thessalonians after chapter 5. He comes out of 1 Thessalonians with the idea that the rapture will take place and those who died in Christ will rise first and those of us who remain will be caught up with him in midair. Then he goes on to warn us that perilous times will come. He talks about the, the great tribulation being on the way. So he comes in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, the first pericope, verses 1 through 5, is what we covered on, on last week. He warns the church at Thessalonica, don't be shaken in your mind. Don't be troubled, neither in your spirit or in word or in by the letters. The Apostle Paul says that you can have confidence in God. You can have confidence in the Holy Spirit. You can have confidence in Jesus Christ. And the same thing, the same doctrine that you have been trained through and the doctrine that you've been trained by way of, you can continue to hold on to that. Regardless of your circumstances, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what people will say, you need to hold on to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the word of God. So tonight we're going to pick up at verse number six, and he's going to reiterate the fact that we have to hold on to the word of God. We got to hold on to what God has taught us, what God has put in us, what God is placing in us on a daily basis as we walk with him. He says, don't be deceived. He says, whatever you do, do not be deceived. Don't, because there will come a day that there will be a great falling away. There will be a great falling away. This falling away is called apostasy. It means that people will fall away from God. They will fall away from the faith and they will fall away from the church. The word is apostasy. It's spelled A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. A-P-O-S-T-A-S-Y. Apostasy. One of these days, there will be a great falling away from the, from the church, a falling away from God, a falling away from the faith in God. This great falling away is being set up right now. You can see people even right now. God allows things to happen so the real deal and the real people will be revealed. God has allowed 
a, a great virus to hit the world. And the real deal is being revealed. How people feel about God, how people feel about the church, how people feel about their loved ones, how people feel about their fellow uh, Christians in the gospel of Jesus Christ. When trouble strikes, the real deal will be revealed. Let me just share with you one thing about it. We have to get to a point in our lives where we understand that faking won't make it. Some people say, let's fake it till we make it. Let's fake it till we make it. Let me tell you, faking it will not make it. If you keep faking it, it's going to be revealed that you're faking it. That which is done shall come to the light. That which is done in the dark shall come to the light. It's more than just sin. Many times, it's just our inadequacies. It is just our incompetence. It will be revealed. It is a lack of us studying the word. Sooner or later, it will be revealed. And we're going to talk about the lawlessness and the son of lawlessness. So Jesus says to us that there would there will be a day that is coming. And Paul reiterates this day. He says the man of sin will be revealed. He says to us that there will one, be one day that a man of perdition or the man of sin or the son of perdition, whatever you want to call it, he will be revealed. And he will be revealed and he will show himself up in the temple of God. He will come to the seat of God. He will come to the seat of God, reveal himself, and he will reveal himself as if he is God. And people will believe that he is God. He will reveal himself. He will show himself as if he's God. And men, women, boys, and girls will follow him as if he is God. So let's look at verse number, number six. Paul says in verse number five, did I not tell you this? <laughs> I've already instructed you. I reminded you. And remember, I told you so. It says in verse number six that, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who is who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Let's talk about he who restrains. Let me just share with you. The devil is being held at bay. The things that are going on around us could be much worse. But the Holy Spirit is the restrainer. God himself, the Holy Spirit, is restraining the devil. The Holy Spirit is restraining the son of lawlessness. The Holy Spirit is holding back all the other bad things that could be happening to us. That's why, regardless of how bad your condition is, you ought to thank God that it's not as bad as it could be. Because it could be really, really bad. But I thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is holding back. Matter of fact, this, this word restrainer means he who withholds. Another word that you can use for the restrainer is, is the withholder. This withholder, the Holy Spirit, is keeping the, the son of lawlessness at bay. If you look at it, though, it's already at work. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. He's going to be revealed in his own time. God will allow the son of lawlessness to re be revealed at a given time. Regardless of how it looks like the devil is in control, God is still on the throne. God is still in control. There are people and there are those who are in control who think that they are in control, but they are not in control. God is yet in control. 
regardless of what you go through, regardless of how bad things be, are and how bad they get or how bad they become, you need to understand one thing. God is yet on the throne. The Holy Spirit is still holding this world together. Regardless of what politicians fight over, the Holy Spirit is still holding it together. I, I'm so thankful to God that, that the, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, I'm so thankful to God that the withholder, the Holy Spirit is holding things together. The Holy Spirit, he is holding things together. See, because the Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is an intelligent being. He's holding it together. He knows what we need before we need it. He knows what we desire before we desire it. He knows what's the best thing for us when we think we know what's best for us. Yes, I'm so glad that the Holy Spirit is holding things together. As, as upside down as this world may be, the Holy Spirit is holding it together. He, the Holy Spirit is holding it together. Verse number seven says, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work only. Only he who now restrains, note that it didn't say he, it didn't say it, it says he. He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Let me just share with you. God has a designated time. Mm -hmm. And when evil people think that they are getting away, God has a designated time mm -hmm. to deal with it. So, so he says, he says, he who now restrains will do so until he is taken away. And, and then the following verses will explain how the, the devil, how, how the son of perdition, how how the lawless one will be taken out, will be taken away. Verse number eight, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume, the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Daniel. And John in the book of Revelation all come to the same conclusion as the Apostle Paul comes to. He says, he says the lawless one will be revealed. He's just in hiding. But he's going to be revealed, the lawless one. Our former president said that he is the, the president of law and order. But he was lawless, not lawful. But, the, but he's not even an inkling of what is yet to come. The lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume. He's going to be taken away. The Lord, Jesus Christ, will consume him with his breath, the breath of his mouth. The, the lawless one will be taken away, will be taken out, will be exiled to hell by the breath of the mouth of the Son of God, Jesus himself. And it says, and he will be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. So the lawless one will be revealed. He will have a seven-year period, period to do all this damage during the tribulation. Remember now, the church has been taken out. The church has been raptured away. The church has been caught up. The church has been snatched away. Then the lawless one will be revealed. And when the lawless one is revealed, then all habit will take place. When the Holy Spirit allows the lawless one to come on the scene, he will spend seven years reaping habit. And he will enjoy reaping habit. People will have no sense of reason, no compassion, no love. They will just do whatever they want to do regardless of what the law says to do. 
because the lawless one will be in charge. But after that period is up, when God has come to a period where he's sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired, then Jesus will come in his brightness. Jesus will come and his brightness will destroy the lawless one. Jesus will come and with the breath of his mouth, he will knock the lawless one out. Thank God for Jesus. The Holy Spirit is holding together. You see, God never finds himself in conflict with God. You see, it's man. It's man that have conflict within. It is man that can't get along with man. The literary writer says there are three different conflicts. First of all, there's man against nature. Secondly, there's man against man. And thirdly, there's man against himself. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit never are in conflict with each other. Yeah, man is in conflict with his and herself. Man meaning the human race. We are in conflict, man against man. We are fighting against each other. Man against nature. It's, it's cold one minute. It's hot the next minute. We can't tell one season from the other. Gold, global warming has become real. Flooding all over the place. Earthquake. Man is fighting against nature. But the key here is, man is at war with man. But the Holy Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son are never at war with each other. Never, ever are they. They're in total agreement. So as the Holy Spirit is present now, God is yet on the throne. God the Father is still on the throne. He's holding things together. The Holy Spirit is holding things together. And those of us who have trusted Jesus Christ as our Savior, he's holding it together on our behalf. Yes. And when Jesus comes, he will set things straight. When Jesus come, then the lawless one has to go. Look at verse number nine. The coming of the lawless one is according to the workings of Satan. With all his power, with all his signs, and with all his lying wonders. It says, the coming of the lawless one. When the lawless one shows up, the lawless one will usher in three things in, in, ex, in extraordinary proportion. These things already exist, but when the lawless one shows up, it's going gonna, it's gonna to greatly abound. Look at what it says. He says, when the lawless one shows up, according to the working of Satan, in other words, the lawless one will be working in conjunction with Satan. He won't be working against Satan. He would do what Satan says. He would act like Satan want him, wants him to act. He would carry himself like Satan wants him to carry himself. The lawless one will come on board. And I know we got some lawless people now. I know we got people that don't obey God, neither do they obey the law of the land. But when this one shows up, it's going to be on like popcorn. So when the lawless one shows up, he will have power. He will have great power. So that's why we cannot get so excited when great things happen at the hands of men. He will have power. Even this power that the lawless one have is coming from the same power, dunamis, explosive power, violent power. Power with strength. The, the, the devil himself, the lawless one, will show up with power. This dunamis power in the Greek. This dunamis power, meaning that he will have strength. It will be violent. It will be at work. It will be mightyful. And he will amaze people. So don't get excited because false prophets prophesy stuff. It takes place. Don't be fooled because they have power. It says when the lawless one comes up, remember the text declares that it is being revealed. The mystery of lawlessness is being revealed and it's already at work now. 
And you can see things at work now. Brothers killing brothers. Sisters fighting sisters and mothers and daughters can't get along like never before. Daddies and, and sons at war like never before. There are people doing things that you never thought you'd hear about and you never thought you would see. Lawlessness has already began to work. Lawlessness has, has already shown up on the scene. And when lawlessness really shows up during this tribulation period, the, the lawless one will have power. He will have great power. He will have a span of seven years. Then Jesus will overthrow him in his second coming. And this will end the tribulation period. He will have power. This is the characteristic of Satan. He will have power and it will amaze so many people. Some people get excited about anything. You, you can do just a little thing that's different and people get excited about it. People will go to the Colosseum and empty their purse because somebody did some great powerful thing. Let me tell you, depend on the Holy Spirit. He's the one who's keeping it and holding it together. So they will have power. They will show forth miracles. Look at the word. It says signs. This word signs refers to significance. People will think that the lawless one is of great significance. We can see this at work now. Some people think others are of great significance to them. That it says that they will perform great works. This, this, this word, another word for power, meaning that they will do great miracles and they will perform great works. They will show great power. Then it says signs, meaning that they will have significance. How many people are significant in your life that's leading you away from Christ, leading you away from God? Apostle Paul says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Let me just say to you, don't get to a point where it's, you are easy to be fooled. Don't get to a point where you're so easy to be fooled until people can do anything with you and act any way with you. And just because it's different and just because it's powerful and just because it's a miracle, just because these are works that you haven't seen anymore, you just give up on the Lord and trust in that person. The text declares that, that it's already at work. The lawlessness, the lawless one is not present yet, but lawlessness is on the scene. It's already at work. So when you talk about miracles, it means great power. When he talks about sign, it's a, it shows forth significance. And then he says, lying wonders. I used to see the, hear the, the season saints back home and said, the devil is a lying wonder. And th then it says tonight that the devil, the lawless one, will present lying wonders. This word wonders indicates an attitude that he's able to invoke in people. Ah, oh, people are amazed. They're, they're in awe. Oh, they're, they're, they're just blown away at this great lawless one. They, they're, they're so blown away until they pick him up and put him on a pedestal. They're just blown away. They, they're, just, they're just in awe. Oh. So, so when, they, when wonders take place, it means that it, it put people at all. They're just so amazed. They're, they're just so focused on this image until they're just blown away. Let me just share with you. Don't be so gullible now because lawlessness is already in the world. It's already at work. We, we need to stick to Jesus. Verse number 10, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. 
Let me unpack that for you. These people are being deceived because they did not re receive the love of the truth. And this love of the truth is the word of God because they did not receive the love of the truth, the word of God, they just blown away. They're at awe. They, they are amazed. And, and not only that, not only did they not receive the love of the truth, <laughs> they are not saved because they did not receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. This love of the truth is the gospel, the word of God. The God's love is found in the gospel. The truth is God's word. And because they did not receive or will not receive God's word, then they're going to be so amazed. See, people are always looking for something to amaze them, something to appease them, something that will blow their socks off. And if you're so easily persuaded by signs, miracles, and wonders, and you have not received Jesus Christ for your salvation, then you're going to be caught up. Don't get caught up on every little thing. Don't, don't get back home. They call it pigeon dropping, pigeon dropping. There will be somebody that, that rides through the country down the gravel road and they will go from house to house selling something or telling you that this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. They will go from house to house and it was called pigeon dropping. What they were doing was taking advantage of people who didn't know any better. And let me just share with you. If it's too good to be true, it's just not true. If it's too good for truth, it's just not true. I'm going to just share with you. It, he says that, and, and with all unrighteous deception, deceiving them, with all unrighteous deception, those who perish because they do not receive the love of truth, do not receive God's love, Jesus, Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son. Do not receive him. They do not receive the love of God's word, the truth of God's word. The truth is God's word itself that they might be saved. Anyone who do not receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, the truth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and believe this story in order to get to heaven, they will not be saved. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusions. For this reason, verse number 11, for this reason, God will send them strong delusions. God will allow them to see in error. God will allow them to be victimized by fraud. God will send him. God, why would God do a thing like that? You remember when God caused uh, Pharaoh's heart to be hardened because they didn't, he did not trust in God? Same thing here with these people. They will not trust in God. They will not trust the word of God. They will not trust God's son, Jesus Christ. They will not trust the Holy Spirit. And because they do not trust the Holy Spirit, God sends them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie. God, since you don't want to believe it, God delivers to you a strong delusion, some strong deception, strong falsehood, allow you to stray away. When you look at Romans chapter one, the apostle Paul says, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind. Meaning if you continue your way in sin, God let you go to destroy yourself. He says, God turns them over to a reprobate mind because they get to a point in their life where they just fall away from God. So you just destroy yourself. So God turns them over to a strong illusion that they should believe the lie. And then God allows them to believe the lie. There's a big lie going around right now. It's known as the big lie. And then every Republican after the other is living behind the same big lie. It's rigged, it's rigged, it's rigged. We just saw evidence of that this week. 
in California uh, because Gavin, uh, the election with Gavin New Newsom, and then they they they, pro they proclaim a big lie even before the election. Oh, it was rigged. And millions upon millions of people are still hanging on to the big lie. Don't you know some of those folk are, are church going people? Some of those folk are claim to be good Southern Baptists. And some of those folk are from every race, creed, and color. Right. But they believe in the, good, the big lie. And let me share with you, it is evident of what's going on now. It is also evident of what is yet to come in a bigger package. Mm -hmm. It is evident that men, men are giving in to the lawless one and they're being set up by the devil right now to believe lawless stuff. He call it the lies of deception. God will allow them to believe such a lie. Verse 12, that they all, how many? They all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. God will allow them to be condemned. God will allow this. Mama, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not cussing, but the, the, the root word here is damned. God will allow them to be damned. And if you look at King James, King James just flat out used the word that God will allow them to be damned means to be sentenced to hell means to be snatched with all their self-esteem, means to be judged, means to be ordained and sued to hell. It says that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth. If you don't believe the gospel, you will be condemned. If you're not distinguished by the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be damned. But they had a pleasure in unrighteousness. There are men today who live under the curtains and under the auspices of unrighteousness, and they love it. They enjoy it. They do it as often as they can. Unrighteousness has become a part of their character. It says here that the lawless one will, will cause them to be condemned. After the church is raptured out of here, after Jesus shows up with all of his brightness, when Jesus shows up and his, his breath takes out the lawless one, people will be left that will be condemned. People will be left that will be sentenced to death and sentenced to hell. I want to say to you tonight, you don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven. You don't have to go to hell. You don't have to miss heaven. You can go to heaven and you can even go tonight. The lawless one is real. The one who is the son of perdition, it is real. And the son of perdition, the lawless one, he will always imitate God. That's why the devil got kicked out of heaven. He got kicked out of heaven because he wanted to be God. He wanted to imitate God. He wants people to worship him. Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the accuser of the brethren. He wants to paint an image as if he's God. He wants to be number one. It wasn't enough for him to be the choir leader. It wasn't enough for him to be the chief musician. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be able to brag on who he was and who he is. The Bible says to us tonight that we're being set up. If we're not saved, we're being set up. Lawlessness is at work all around us. People are dying because of lawlessness all, all around us. But this is not how the story ends. One of these days, it's gonna really get bad. Yes. 
One of these days, after the church is snatched out of here, after the Holy Spirit is no longer in control the way we see him in control today, when the devil is in charge for seven years, the tribulation will be really bad. We think we having trials and tribulations now. Trials and tribulations as we know it is nothing compared to what's going to happen. The church will be raptured up. We will leave here. The Bible says we will forever be with the Lord. It says to comfort one another with these words. It says the dead in Christ shall rise first and those of us who remain will be caught up with him in mid yes. We will forever be with the Lord. But there's another group who will be left behind. There's another group who will have another chance to get it right. But the devil will torture them. The devil is setting them up now. He's at work right now in the world in which we live. The devil is on the scene. His spirit is here. He is the prince of the air. He's, he's rounding up his troops in order to take many of us to hell. But he can't come by my house. Can he come by your house? Can he depend on you to sign up for the trip? The devil is signing folk up tonight to make the trip to hell with him. But I signed up in 1980. In room number two, Miss Barnes' sixth period class, when Dorothy Steele said to me, you don't have to keep living the way you're living. You can be changed right here, right now, today. She gave me this gospel story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. She gave me the recipe. She said, if you can just believe the story that he died on Calvary, that he was laid in a borrowed tomb, and early that Thursday morning, he rose from the dead. If you can just believe the story, you can get out of here and you can go to heaven when Jesus raptures us up. You don't have to be around here when the lawless one is revealed. I submit to you today, you must be. You got to be, you have to be born again. Being born again is not running, jumping, shouting, rolling on the, on the floor, or speaking in other tongues. These things you may do, that's left up to you in the Holy Spirit. But what you must do is repentantly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And out of obedience unto God, he gave his life as a ransom for you and for me. Yes, he did. He did it <clears throat> over 2,000 years ago. He gave his life as a ransom, as a payback. He bought us back, and he brought us back. He died for you, and he rose for you. And you can be saved right here tonight. The text declares that they, that they might be saved. You have to love the truth of God that you might be saved. You must love the word of God that you might be saved. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus. Trust him. Just believe this simple story that a real man exists. His name was Jesus. His name still is Jesus. His name will always be Jesus. There are a lot of men named Jesus but there's only one begotten son. John 3.16 says he's, he's God's one and only begotten son. That means he's God's one of a kind son. He's God's only unique son. If you can trust him today, you can be saved right where you are. Whether you're on the street or whether you're in the living room whether you're driving in your car, whether you're looking at your phone or your pad or your, your droid or your, your iPhone or your iPad, whether you're looking at television or YouTube, you can be saved right here, right here today. You just need to trust the story and invite Jesus into your life. If this is you and you need to be born again, I want to pray that you reach Jesus. And the only way to reach heaven, the 
only way to reach Jesus is submit to this story. Will you repeat after me and invite Jesus into your life? Just say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new creation. Make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed this prayer, honestly believing the story and trusting the story that Jesus died for your sins and he rose from the dead. We believe that you're on your way to heaven. We believe that you don't have to go through this tribulation period. We, we believe that you can get out of here before the tribulation hits. The Apostle Paul said, lawlessness is at work even today. But you don't have to worry about that. You're saved. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. There are others of us who have fallen short, who keep falling down and get back up, who are saved, but for some reason or other, sin just has his way with us. I want to say to you, you can turn your life around. You can repent. You can renew your fellowship with God. I want to say to you today that you can be changed. You can be made different. I want to pray with you. Lord Jesus, we ask you to bless. God, we ask you to come bless us as we confess our sins. We admit falling short. We admit to constantly doing the wrong thing. We admit to not doing the things that are pleasing in your sight. Now, Lord, I ask you to bless us. Forgive us. Welcome us back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. God has blessed us to keep walking on planet Earth so we can be a living testimony for others to see. And let us do that. Let us be that. Let us not complain when we're going through. The, this church at Thessalonica was going through some terrible times. Paul says to them, stay focused. Stay with the Lord. Have a love for the truth of God, for the word of God. Be, be saturated with the word. That's why we're listening to the Bible, and that's why we, we are reading the Bible. That's why we're writing down what God is saying to us in the Bible. And we want God to continue to bless us through his word. The only way we can be strong against the lawless one, against the lawlessness that's in the world today, is that we saturate ourselves with the word. The word saturate is an electronic term. When, when you have a transistor and, and it's filled to the brim and you can't get any more currents through it, it's called saturation. I want to say to you today, you got to saturate yourself in the word. Your, your, the word has to go in your spirit, even subconsciously. You have to play the word, listen to the word, read the word, study the word of God because lawlessness is real and the devil want to have you jesus said to peter peter the devil wants to have you he wants to sift you like sifting wheat so we want to stick with the word stay with the word meditate in the word saturate ourselves in the word because the devil is at work he's doing his job will we do ours Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. It is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gift. Now is a good time to give. Don't wait till Sunday. The day you get it, the day you give it. And therefore, you can give all time of night, all time during the week. You can mail your gifts to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 
7-7-4-5-9. That's New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 7-7-4-5-9. Or you can send your offering, your tithes, your, your sacrificial gifts by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's lifting. Dot Jesus at yahoo.com. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being part of our giving. Thank you so much for giving. And let me say to those who have been giving online, in person, as well as giving by way of mail, thank you for, for keeping the church afloat. Thank you for ministering to the Lord with your gifts. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank those who have contributed to my 17 years of pastoring the New Beginning Church. 17 years of pastoring the New Beginning Church. This past Sunday, we celebrated 17 years. It was my 17th year anniversary of pastoring the New Beginning Church. Clap right there, Sister Davis. Clap for everybody else. Clap for everybody else. Come on. Come on. 17 years of pastoring the New Beginning, the New Beginning Church. The New Beginning Church. Continue, continue to pray for me and continue to pray for the New Beginning Church as we move by the Spirit of God. During our prayer time, we want to pray for Sister Lorraine Orr, my mother-in-law, my wife's mother. Pray and lifting up Sister Lorraine Orr. Pray for her health and her strength. We also want to pray for Chelsea Velasquez. Chelsea Velasquez. Uh, her mother went home to be with the Lord, so we want to lift her up. Uh, uh, we want to continue to lift them up as this family have been impacted by COVID-19. The entire family has been impacted by COVID-19, so we want to continue to lift this family before the Lord. The mother went home to be with the Lord. Her time here has expired. That's why I constantly tell people, stop believing in the false doctrine get vaccinated. Go ahead and get vaccinated and stop believing in the false prophets and the false heresy and the, the false lies. The, the, those who are in the medical field are far more important in their presentation than the grapevine, the gossip on the street. Whatever you do, continue to follow the scientists, continue to follow the medical experts believe in, in what God is doing. Somebody said the other day, well, I don't need the vaccine because God got me. I said to them, if you don't need the vaccine, you don't need a gun because God got you. And I also said to them, there are many pastors, many pastors' families have passed away and you trying to tell me that these holy field men and women and children of God God didn't have them, and you more important than they, they were. We have to make sure we do our part in the natural as God continues to hold this word together, this world together in the spiritual. We also want to pray for Sister Emma Brannon. Sister Emma Brannon, who is, is uh, Reverend Brannon's wife, Reverend Brannon, uh, Ed Brannon of our church. We're praying for his wife and lifting that entire family before the Lord. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, for who you are, for what you've done. We thank you for blessing us tonight. We ask you to continue to walk with us. We pray for the Velasquez family. We ask you to lift them, Father God. Lift their spirits, lift their hearts, lift their emotions, and bless them to trust you as never before. We pray, Father God, that you continue to walk with them and encourage them. Lord, we pray, Father God, for Sister Emma Brannon. We ask you to bless her mind, bless her heart, bless her physical faculties. We ask you to heal her in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Father God, to give her strength and hope. We ask you to bless her family members, that they will endure and depend on you in times like these. We ask you to bless Reverend Ed Brannon. We ask you to encourage him even right now. Lord, we pray, Father God, for Sister Lori Noah. We ask you to bless her, Father God. Strengthen her 
and her heart strengthen her in her mind. Fit, strengthen her in her physical body, Father God. We ask you, Father God, to keep her. And Father God, bless her to know that you are her refuge. You're the one that she runs to in time of trouble. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, in dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church.